Throughout history, geology has played a role in just about everything humans have done, affecting agriculture, the siting of cities, construction materials, trade routes, and our mythology, to name a few. Geology can also play a role in the conduct and outcome of warfare. In this Expeditions in Geology video, we're going to take a look at how the local geology affected the conduct and the outcome of an important World War II battle. In 1943, the Allies were fighting northward through Italy with the objective of capturing Rome. In response, Adolf Hitler constructed several defensive lines, including the Gustav Line, at the narrowest part of the Italian peninsula. The linchpin of that line was the town of Cassino. Running along the center of the Italian peninsula are the Apennine Mountains. The only good route north for the Allies was along the west side of the peninsula. Certain river valleys provided the only relatively broad, flat terrain, and that led to the decision by the Allies to follow the Leary River Valley, right past that same town of Cassino. The bedrock in the area consists of Mesozoic Age carbonate-rich sedimentary rocks, especially limestone and dolostone. The bedrock is cut by normal faults roughly parallel to the Apennines, and this led to the formation of grabens, along which flow various rivers. Faults also apparently controlled where volcanoes formed, including the less than two million year old Rocamonfina volcano. This volcano dammed the Leary River, forming a large lake in which hundreds of meters of sediment, called lacustrine sediments, accumulated over tens of thousands of years. After the lake drained away, rivers reformed and cut down into those sediments, forming terraces and depositing new alluvial or river deposited sediment on top of those lacustrine sediments. These young sediments are prone to turning into mud when wet and are not very capable of supporting heavy equipment like tanks and trucks. There was another bedrock feature in the valleys near the towns of Casino and San Angelo that would play a role in those World War II battles. Mixed in with the lacustrine deposits in this area are big mounds of travertine like exposed here. Some of these mounds are big. In fact, the village of San Angelo here is built on top of one of these mounds. It was from these travertine bluffs and the village of San Angelo that the Germans dug in defensive positions and attacked the Americans who were advancing slowly from the east toward the Rapido River. Against the backdrop of all these geologic elements, the battles to break the Gustav Line were fought. They began on the night of January 17, 1944. This is the floodplain of the Rapido River, and behind me are terraces cut into the lacustrine deposits of that Pleistocene lake as the river cut down into this area. This is the flat, marshy ground that the Allies had to advance across in order to reach San Angelo. And because of the geology here, this battle did not go well. In just 48 hours of fighting, the Allies suffered 1,681 casualties, most of them from the 36th Infantry Division from Texas. After a few days, the Allies regrouped and tried again to cross the river, picking a new location. The next Battle of Casino took place here, just north of Casino, along the Rapido River. The American 34th Infantry Division advanced from the east toward the river and the German Gustav Line. Once the Allies reached the Rapido River, the characteristics of the river came into play. The river's not very wide here. It's less than 20 meters in most places, and it's only a meter in some places, three or four meters deep. But it does flow very fast. It's up to 13 kilometers an hour in many places. The banks here are those same soft sediments of the floodplain or lacustrine deposits, and so they're very difficult to scale. And finally, you're seeing the river here on a warm summer's day. The fighting here took place in January 1944, and mostly at night. The Germans had plenty of time to prepare. First of all, they dammed the river here along this highway, and second, they blew up a dam farther upstream. The combination of those two things caused the river in this area to flood its own floodplain, and that turned the lacustrine clays and floodplain deposits into an icy, muddy field that the Americans had to cross on foot just to reach the river. After a difficult battle, they did succeed in crossing the river, though they still had one more major obstacle to face, the mountain called Monte Cassino. A 
Atop Monte Cassino was a monastery originally built in 529 AD by Benedict of Norcia, St. Benedict. It had a commanding view of the valley, and so the mountain and monastery were ideal defensive positions for the Germans. The mountain had to be taken, and as an initial step, with permission from Pope Pius XII, the Allies dropped five million pounds of bombs, reducing the monastery to rubble. and agriculture created a steep-sided, treacherous mountain with few places to dig in for shelter. Troops from 14 countries participated in the difficult and bloody attack on the mountain. Once again, geology played an important role. Unlike some types of bedrock, the carbonate bedrock tended to shatter when hit by high explosives, and even today it's fairly easy to find evidence of explosions, including shatter cones, similar to those produced by meteorite impacts. The ruins of the monastery were finally captured, primarily by Polish troops who suffered heavy losses in the attack, on May 18th. Finally freed to advance north, the Allies captured Rome less than three weeks later. After the battles of Cassino, several cemeteries were built nearby. Local stone was used to create the monuments and memorials to commemorate those who died during those early months of 1944. The monastery at Monte Cassino was rebuilt by the Italian people and reconsecrated 20 years after the battles of Cassino, Italy.